All right, mom, I'm gone. <sighs> Just try not to get hurt again. Uh, mom, I I have to as part training thing. I know, but still, I would rather not have to bandage you up again. Are you sure you want to be on his team? <sighs> well, you know why I'm... Yes, I know. You don't have a quirk. You can't be a world breaker like your father and me, or even All Might. I understand that, but still, I know, I, I worry about you. I know you're, you were friends with Katsuki, but, uh, come on, Mom. Who else studies quirks like me? Who else can find strategies and tactics? Who else can, I know. Be completely honest. I think he's just using you to make himself greater. It, I, you know that already, don't you? I, of course you do. Seriously, he's just using you to make himself look better. By using your tactics, by using your training that you specifically made for him and each and every one of his other team members. I wish you would have gone to another field, but I want to make you and Dad proud. We already are. You are one of the smartest people we know, but... Putting yourself in harm's way, you can just be, I don't know, Mom, I know I can't be a world breaker without a quirk, I know my limitations, but at the end of the day, I still want to, I want to do my part, and besides, Today is the big day. What? You know, they send us off to the planet to see if we can either be diplomatic or, you know. Oh, wait, that was today? It, yeah. Oh, I. I'm sorry. I, I, I actually. I for I know. <sighs> but yeah. If today goes well, I'll go have his own world in which everyone gets a share of it. <sighs> Are you sure? Yeah. want to believe you, but Koski isn't the same boy he used to be. That quirk has really gone to his head. And now he's going to be in charge of either establishing diplomatic relations or dominating a planet. I understand you're excited. I understand what this could implicate, but can't you just stay here or go to one of our other worlds to do some more training, take a break, reschedule the test or something? Mom. I can't keep relying on you guys forever. <sighs> yeah.
I know. I know. It's just... I am very worried about what could happen. Especially when we can't protect you. You don't have... My gravity manipulation. And you sure as hell don't have your father's fire manipulation. Fire breathing. Either way, it, you... I know. <sighs> okay. Uh, I, I gotta go. It, it's getting a little... I won't be late. Those of you wondering what the hell have I done? Just as a child says, Wolf Deku was a world breaker. Only thing is... World Breakers are a bit different compared to Marvel comics and whatnot. Here, World Breakers are court to individuals with quirks that are powerful enough that they would be uh, useful in colonization and subjugation and a whole bunch of interesting things when it comes to expanding the reach of Earth. The thing is, once Quirks were actually starting to become a thing, the, the governments of the world came together and thought, let's not breed Quirks specifically to the point where, hell, is there life on other planets? Let's find out. This Quirk allows you not to have a need for air. This one means you don't have to eat as much food. This one slows your aging. One of these quirks makes you strong enough to lift a space shuttle? On and on and on. It depends on how useful the quirk is, as well as for the tactics you, uses you can implement it for. And uh, when they're successful, yeah, they get a planet, which they do have to split with their teammates because you can't just go around subjugating a whole entire race every time sometimes they're more than enough to actually put up more than a fight in which someone has to play diplomat and the other one has to be pretty much an enforcer so you can only imagine when it comes to Izuka's parents, yeah, they still have their course, but they were honed, strengthened over the years to a point where, yeah, they were definitely capable of uh, keeping the peace or maintaining order. In which, due to their successful missions, though on separate teams, they have gathered a uh, a decent number of worlds. Five, respectively. Though having to share with their comrades is still very impressive. Because here, instead of just giving their successful world breaker teams land, they give them entire worlds to govern, control, and pretty much provide resources that are only found on that planet. Yeah, they bring back to Earth. They it's like this whole mining business where resources get uh, shipped back to Earth. They get paid for it. But sometimes there is very very rare circumstances in which uh, the planet's inhabitants aren't very diplomatic. They're very stubborn. They don't want to be subjugated. They rather fight to death. And yeah, that's where the ranking systems do come in handy. Depending on how dangerous the threat is, they'll either try to Mm. 
break the wheels to the point where, yeah, kind of like breaking wild horses. Or think of Exterminatus. They'll cut the losses and make sure they don't run to the problem of this particular plant and or race again. But that rarely happens. Due to the top world breaker teams, of which All Might is one of the best. The number one of Earth. At least she would be if it wasn't for her Stars and Stripes. Her quirk, New World Order. Now that's something you don't want to fuck with. But at the end of the day, you, you can't argue with the results. Each of them have a 100% success rate from either obtaining diplomatic means or completely destroying a population. Yeah, it's safe to say all might and Star Strikes have more than collected their fair share of worlds for Earth. And now, it's Izuku's turn to aid in the fight. The expansion of the human race. Though, yes, he doesn't have a quirk. He is more than happy to play a more supporting role. Especially with his old childhood friend, Bakugo Katsuki. The only thing is, Bakugo... He's a lot more arrogant in this. While in the can of anime, he wants to be the number one hero. World Breakers are a lot more revered. I mean, not not just anyone can conquer a planet. So yeah, once he once he got his quirk explosions, yeah, he trained that as much as he could. In which they do have training facilities, mainly for ring in some unruly potential breakers. Which Bogo, being as airy as he is, he has been a part of. But when it comes to training with the team, him knowing Gizuku, like his parents, love the fact that, yeah, I got multiple wor worlds from either side of my family. It all go to me, of course, once they pass, but still. He knows Gizuku's ambitious about at least aiding a world breaker. And he knows Izuku notebooks. Izuku, yes, uh, in canon he would say quirks. He want to know their weaknesses, their strengths, what can make them stronger, what could they be weak against. Like, hmm. imagine Bakugo going to a frozen planet. Izuku would have prepared for that. Well, Bakugo was in a blistering planet in which, hell, every time he sweats, he's wasting precious, and I do mean precious, nitroglycerin. Izuku would plan for that when it comes to training. Izuku has their training regiments ready in which he does participate in training himself. One thing is, uh, nope, there is no real reason for him to trying his body as long as that brain is still intact. So, Bago being a lot more airy in this scenario is a bit much. Hell, he spars with Izuku specifically to show dominance or the very least 
show the rest of the team that, yeah, I have this kid right around my finger. As, yeah, the whole team, which does consist of Kirishima, Oraka, Mina, as well as <laughs> Dingy. Right now, it's Dinky. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, they see how Izuku is being treated. The only thing is, like, what can they really do? Though they do have powerful quirks, each possible of becoming world breakers on their own, they're. Yeah, they'd rather just be side characters right now. I mean, at the end of the day, they still get the spoils, whatever world they conquer. And though they're pretty much building up the world breaker, it's the whole team that makes sure that everything goes smoothly. Everyone on the team does like Izuku better than Bakugo, especially considering he helps them. It doesn't just try to beat them into submission. But it's the real fact that they kind of pity Izuku. Hell, it's his friend who's treating him like pretty much nothing but a pet. He's He wants to help the world breakers, but he, he wishes he could be one, but he can't do that without a quirk. Hell, Oraka and Mina have noticed how much effort Izuku puts into not only their training, but also the tactics and planning out contingency plans just in case things do fall apart. Hell, he actually gave Bakugo and Mina a pretty good idea in which they store their quirks, so to speak. Bago, he stores that nitroglycerin sweat. Mina, acid. Hell, he even had Dinky train by powering up batteries just to use them as backups just in case. And you can just imagine how he does help Waraka when it comes to her uh, nausea. I should say when she sees him, she's uh, she gets nauseous for a different reason. Because in this version, Izuku does train his body so much, he's a lot more bulky as well as cut than he would be in canon by this time. He's not <laughs> no new leg, chicken arm, or whatever you call it. We looking motherfucker. He is built. But that can only take him so far. When it comes to being a world breaker, hmm? You're going to need some real power in your corner. Izuku just doesn't have that without a quirk. So, he can't really do much unless he want to become world breakers themselves or, you know, just leave. They see how Izuku is very serious about being a part of this whole thing. And you know, if they leave, yeah, it's just going to get worse for Izuku. I mean, Bakugo could easily get possibly more team members, but the thing is, they could be just as bad, if not worse than Bakugo, and that would be disastrous. So, at the very least, they try to protect Izuku to an extent. 
even going as far as to help him after Bogo decides to spar with the poor boy. But enough of all that. Let's get to the briefing room. Oh man, what have I done? In which, yes, Bogo, feet on the table, just barely paying attention. Izuku writing notes about the plan they're about to visit. As everyone is trying their best to pay attention, Bogo just doesn't care at all. He's just saying, let's just get this over with so I can get my glory. Because at the end of the day, he wants to be the best. He wants to be better than all of the heroes. Nice world breakers of this world. Hell, his mom couldn't be a world breaker. His dad couldn't be a world breaker. So if anything, yeah, he uh, doesn't have big shoes to fill for when it comes to his lineage of the world breaker. But Izuku, I think both parents be world breakers is already st stressful enough. He can't really live up to their legacy, but at the very least he can help build up someone else's and hopefully get a piece of that but as far as the plan that they're going to to end up uh, taking over it's a pretty standard planet it, it has a fair amount of a good atmosphere is breathable and everything the only thing is, the technology, it's not too big of a deal, but at the very least, there are the same hiccups you would expect. For one, the planet they're going to is very hostile. Even the plants and animals would most likely kill you on site given the chance. When it comes to the natives, they are battle hardened and <laughs> I say, even the kids could take <laughs> down a full grown adult. Though yes he is paying a Slightest bit of attention, Bogo realizing, okay, so these people in this planet aren't a bunch of weaklings. He has an evil grin on his face, realizing, if I could take over this planet, as young as I am, I'll be well on my way to becoming one of the top world breakers. Him having a wonderful imagination of having all might and stars and stripes both just concede the feet towards him however Izuku he knows that face he knows what Bago's planning and him hearing about the planet they're being sent to Izuku is very worried because it's one thing for the plants and animals to be very hostile but the people who are seemingly very distrusting of possible combatants those being raised and born in such a harsh environment which you had to better adapt yourself or die and as you can imagine, 
when it comes to going to someone else's home turf. It's they have the home field advantage. So while Bakugo was just fantasizing about the glory he's gonna receive from this conquest, Izuku is playing for more just in case things go tits up. <laughs> He's trying to find ways like, okay, so uh, is there anything that we could possibly offer them in exchange for peace? Is there a way to make it so Bakugo doesn't go full on rage mode, try to kill everyone? over and over he's running scenarios on his head in which how things could just get so bad so quickly and we all hinge on one main thing Bakugo if he can behave great if he can't oh man this could be dreadful because there have been full-blown wars caused by Uro Breaker's actions. <laughs> and, uh, luckily, not many of the worlds have had uh, the same technological advancements. There were a few, but <laughs> you don't become a top-rated uh, World Breaker for being weak. Yeah. So, he's a cool. He's made as many preparations as he could before they shipped off. Baraka being more than happy to help him out. Mina and Denki are sure as hell egging her on. It's like, come on, you, you bet. You better, uh, you know, get with the program. If you don't tell them, chances are I will. <laughs> of course, typical Mina behavior. I can see that. Baraka is very worried. More for Izuku's safety, because she can see how this is their first world they're going to in the conquer and which it could be very dangerous as well as they could die people have died from the test alone because they get no support from earth they are on their own as soon as they are shipped off if they can't establish communications they sure as hell can't even consider calling for help. Even then, who's to say another squad could be sent out? Though, yeah, I can see Inko and Hazashi <laughs> dropping everything to come save their boy. The odds of them getting a signal out are slim to none. So, yeah. Oraga trying to cover Izuku sadly fails in which then he remembers oh my god that's right I don't just have to worry about keeping Kachan safe I have to keep them safe too in which yeah of course Bakugo is the most problematic but he's also one of the, mm, yeah can't lie he's actually the most powerful in that team Oh, his explosions? Whew! Getting hit with one of those is not going to take it at all. Yeah, it means that you can melt your body into a slow, painful death. But it still takes a lot of her to really secrete enough. Denki, he can't control where his lightning goes. It's more like a guessing game. Now, Raka. She still has to touch you to actually use her quirk. And Izuku, the weakest of them all, he has some strength and speed in that tactical mind of his, but without some real ammunition 
in his camp. Mm. Yeah, not looking good. What's he doing up landing? They already come across some problems. For one, Izuku, he's pretty much fidgeting over all the equipment, trying to establish communications while Bakugo is trying to run off and start the whole concrete process. If anything, he thinks that these uh, natives are nothing but savages to the point where, uh, let me just show who's boss and we'll be on our way to fame and fortune. Is it good? Like, no, let's make sure we can phone home. What are you scared of? You have me here. There's no need. I'll protect you just like I used to when we were kids. What? Yeah. I mean, it'll be just like when we were younger and I know, no, that's not how it happened. What? You were the one doing the bullying and I tried to cover for you. Really? Yes! Honestly? Yeah. Huh? Oh. Hmm. Oh well. <sighs> Doesn't matter. I'll protect you, weaklings. If anything, just don't get in my way. If you do, don't blame me if you get blown up. As yeah, Mina and Denki do end up going. With Bago while Oraka and Izuku stay to establish communications to Earth. And it doesn't take long, at least, let's say, 10, 15 minutes. Let's get Bago to the benefit of the doubt without. He already starts firing up the explosions, destroying a fair amount of trees and. Izuku is already like, I can't believe it. His attitude's got better. What? <laughs> Seriously, I thought he was going to start blowing things up way earlier. But I guess this is what we can call progress. Um, Izuku? Yeah? Your eye's twitching. What? Oh, <laughs> So, so, <clears throat> so it is. Uh, do you want to as them be here screaming? Izuku, he knows that scream anywhere. It's Denki! As soon as he and Oraka do end up floating towards the location where these last solar explosions, they see that one, Mina's not unconscious. Two, Denki's being choked out like a... Um, how should I say this? <clears throat> uh, he's being choked out like Bart gets when Homer is upset with him. Yeah, I guess that'll work. <clears throat> However, Bakugo, he has a broken arm. And Izuku is looking like what happened. Saying that, yeah, Buckle's arm is bloodied, and he can even see his bones sticking out, wondering how in the world did you do that? Him, like, how did you survive that? As yeah, they see this big o as Goliath motherfucker. So. Stone skin. What? What? Yeah, we figured someone would come to try and subjugate us. Never again. Uh, what? What do you mean again? Don't worry. At the very least, 
You'll make good fertilizer. As this Bongo gets drop kicked, Aizuku looks in horror. And yeah, Oraka, she is pissing herself with fear. I mean that literally. Because yeah, the strongest members of them have been brought down. And Bakugo, the whole area he was, he had the power to back it up. Izuku, he feels like, yeah, we were not prepared for this. And then they get spotted. Oraka tries to snap herself out of it, but it's not working. Till Izuku shakes some sense into her and tells her to get out of here. Her really not wanting to leave him. As he looks, seeing that, oh, this is going to get ugly very fast, if nothing's done. So, I have a feeling this is going to happen, so I prepared accordingly. What? Him actually taking out a trunk from his storage device. What's that? This is a huge crate of Kaboom Boom that I packed just in case. What are you? All I can say is get everyone else out of here. I'll see you soon. Araga can't fathom fast enough. She can't process what's happening fast enough as Izuku dashes away from her straight towards these big ass giants and pretty much has no choice but to toss Mina, Denki, and Bakugo towards Araka telling her to get out as he pulls one big ass pin from the crate and to those who who know what a Claymore mine does, imagine something hmm, ten times more powerful. And Izuku is right behind the explosion. Though yes, his body is more tempered. He can't take all that force. So he gets flown into a shit ton of trees. As Oraka is stunned and tries to run away. Only thing is, she suddenly realizes it's too late. These motherfuckers already surrounded her and then her leg gets broken. Though yes, she can float and still technically fight. The powerhouses are already down for the count. So, yeah. Though, yes, yeah, she can risk flowing away either with or without them. Chances are they are not leaving alive. Though they've been able to establish communications, she cannot get to the ship fast enough to call for help. Sadly, they didn't, uh, they didn't pack anything that would work as a distress beacon. So, yeah. Izuku, he finally wakes up after, let's say, 20 minutes. He's barely able to move, but luckily, he just broke one arm and dislocated a shoulder, pops it back into place, and he's moving relatively fast. The only thing is, he's wondering, where's everyone else? He prays that Araka got away with everyone, but at the end of the day, he's like, if that didn't take out any of them, chances are, ugh. 
the worst case scenario has happened. In which, you can imagine, Izuku. He's surprised now to really just see them that they're alive, but to see that, uh, yeah, Oraga, Mina are wearing some very revealing clothes. As for Bakugo and Denki, they're pretty much, let's say for the, for lack of a better word, they look like they're about to be burned alive. As yes, Bogo he does uh, have a slight laugh when it comes to like, you know this isn't going to work for me. You saw what I did. What makes you think fire is going to hurt me? Your arm. Your body is not ready for the full scope of your power. Why am I so sure? Because you wouldn't have hurt yourself that badly if you weren't really trying to, you know, you would have done a lot worse than explosion if you could. The only thing is you know your own limits. And you decided to push past them, which may be admirable, but also very stupid. In which, yes, now your arm is like this. Like I said, you'll make good fertilizer. Thanks to your ashes. As will your friend. <laughs> I don't want to die here. Oh, don't worry. Your sacrifice will not be in vain. At the very least, thank you for bringing us these beautiful women. We shall make great wives for our sons. As, yeah, Mina, she does try to use her acid. The only thing is, last time, they broke her fingers. So, yeah, she's unconscious. Because of Oraka, they threatened to burn off her fingertips. So, yeah, best not to do that again. So, Izuku has no choice but to think of a strategy to either overpower or else more these bastards in which they are a lot smaller than they look they are a lot stronger than he could have ever hoped because he remembers the one he shot that explosion at full blast and there is even a scratch on him <laughs> so yeah He's a go. He is panicking and running out of options. Then he's like, wait. There must be more to this than what meets the eye of everything. Okay, so they're strong, they're fast, they're durable as hell. <sighs> Come on, I, I did not account on someone so powerful here. And then he hears a snap of a twig just to turn around huh so there's where you've been hiding huh he's really getting not unconscious when he wakes up he's met by Bakugo and Denki as well as Oraka and Mina in which yeah they're pretty much like thank you for joining the party Bago, he's pissed. He's yelling at Izuku. He's like, why did you plan this out more? How come you didn't? I tried to warn you. But you never listen. Who do you think you're talking to? I'm talking to you, you stupid, inconsiderate, arrogant. <sighs> okay, so shut up. Let me think. I might be able to find us a way to get out of here. You're serious. 
<laughs> you really think you have any hope of escaping? I, I, you had your chance to leave without your compatriots, even with your woman. Ah, but she's not, and yet you decided to stay here and <laughs> risk your life to save your friends, even though you knew you may die on this planet. I, I uh, you were willing to sacrifice yourself just so they had the slightest hope of leaving here alive, which I must say is rather honorable. However, very stupid. Uh, uh, what are you? Hmm. We've been called many things. But one name that we've always been known by is Nephilim. What? Yes. The ones who were supposed to perish at during the flood. Uh, uh. Yes, those are our ancestors. We are descendants of giants. But before the flood truly overtook our ancestors, we decided, at least they did, decide to leave. Luckily, they did find some way to escape the doomed world. Could have came back whenever we wanted, whenever they wanted, but they decided to wait. Then they found this place and thought to themselves, it may be harsh on this world, but we can make it home easily. We are strong, hearty, durable, fast. We are adaptable. And this time, no one is going to try to eradicate us. Or so we thought. We were minding our own business when you showed up. And then this thing, this one right here, decided to provoke us. Show off his Significant little. Mm, what did you call them? Um, uh, I called them uh, sp spark sparkles. <laughs> yes, yes, sparkles. Yeah. If anything, it was quite amusing up until. Uh, he started mouthing off to us. But when I retaliated and he damaged his own arm, then the girl stepped in. Then the multi. just one with the strange lightning bolt pattern on his hair decided to butt in. So we just bashed with them. Though alive, beaten, yes. <sighs> we just wanted to be left alone. But for some reason, we can't be left alone. 
there's always going to be someone there to try to eradicate us. So, how about this? We'll use our ships to go back home and take back what's ours. What? You heard me. Yeah, hopefully you'll put up more of a fight than you did. Though noble your efforts were, they amount to nothing. Hmm? What's this? As then, yeah. This giant to which. Huh. Is this your mother? Quite beautiful. You make an excellent spouse for me, don't you think? Oh, wait. This is this your father? Hmm. I wonder how good a fertilizer he would make. <laughs> what? Oh, don't worry. If anything, after you're long gone, though it may take some doing, I'm sure that the kids I'll have, I'll name after you. So, what is your name, young man? What? What? Strange name. Well, matters not. A silver spit will burn you to ash first. <sighs> All right. Let's get this started. As then, yeah, the pikes that they've been strung up on or least the stakes, they get started on the fire. As the fire starts to crawl straight up towards Izuku, he's silent, strangely. As why is he panicking? I don't. As then, in a burst of wind and a strange green essence that seems to emanate from Zuku, burst out. The fire's been put out, and the Zuku is free. There is no traces of the stake or hell. Even though this a a meter's worth of land that was constructed upon is they're looking like wait what? Izuku just looks at them. My name. You want to know my name? Yes. But I thought it was what? No. My name is Izuka Midoriya. Remember it. Hmm. Huh. Very well. Izuka Midoriya. I'll try to remember it after you're dead. <laughs> What's so funny? Believe me. My name will be the last thing you remember. And what's that supposed to... Ezuku brushes past him. This giant that looks 
is then nothing. This guy is disintegrated and turned into dust. No, just ashes. Leaving not a trace behind. As everyone is looking at this. Stinky, Bakugo, the other guys, Oraka, and Mina. They're looking and wondering, wait, what just happened? As Zuko's eyes glow green, this green energy starts to envelop him. As he, with a devilish grin, Okay, so who wants to die next? All of them try to bomb rush him, but with a single touch, Izuku completely decimates them, leaving nothing, and I do mean nothing, left. They're just ashes to the wind. Everyone is shocked at this. Bakugo of all people are like, wait, what is this? Is Mina... Did... Did Midoriya just awaken a quirk? As soon as Izuku takes care of the rest of the giants, boy, it's Nephilim. He unties Bakugo and Denki, then frees Mina, as well as Oraka. Mina, of course she's still hurt, as are Bakugo and Denki. Hell, even Oraka, he's the only one who can actually function right now. He places his hand on Mina. Asking if she's alright. Her blushing. So I, 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 I'm fine. Just a little. Uh, always trying to act tough, huh? Ah. Uh, yeah, I, uh. Well, you know, I have to. It's, <laughs> you, you guys would be lost if I... And then as you were just... <sighs> I'm very sorry you guys got hurt. I wish I prepared better for this. As Zuka cries... And then this green energy starts to envelop him again. Mina's like, oh no, 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 please don't tell me I'm going to die. And then she notices, wait. The pain is starting to subside. Her fingers start to go back to the way they were. We're not building the, the right way. Is Did you just heal me? Huh? Him looking at the... Wait, what? It's all wrong. I was like... Wait, you can heal too? I... I, I don't know. I guess? Try again. And then... Nothing. Come on, try again. Again, nothing. Huh. Wait, what were you feeling when you were healing Mina? Sadness? Like I wanted to help? Try to get in touch with that feeling again. It was as soon as he does, Araka gets healed. As he starts to get more in tuned to the feeling of wanting to help. To protect at the very least as he heals everyone else. Bogo is speechless as everyone else is pretty much thanking their lucky stars that Izuku has finally, after so long, 
There's so much change. Unlocked his quirk.